Welcome back, adventurers. This is your host, Tom or Robots, and I am here, as usual, with my wonderful co-host, Lotus of Doom. How you doing, Lotus? Hello, hello. And uh, this is the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. This is the show where we cover all of the uh, the details, all the wonderful lore from the Elder Scrolls games. And Lotus, how have you been? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Got out of work, had some food. Now I'm here to discuss some lore. So nice. Nice. Uh, as, as usual. Good and good way to end my evening chatting about this stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah. So um, so we've had man, the world's been a buzz. Elder Scrolls Online's been a buzz. So last week yeah. it was all about the new content coming out. This week it's all about the PvP community being upset. What that's but, yeah, you know I was gonna say as part of that <laughs> group. Yeah, all right. That that's kind of just how it always is over here. Uh, yeah, it's just kind of part, <laughs> part of the course. On the flip side, though, uh, without delving too much into all of that, because honestly, I'm tired of reading about it slash hearing it about it uh, mm-hmm. there's plenty to see one thing that all of this did spur which is a good thing um matt fryer uh had an official forum post that kind of gave a peek behind the curtain to an extent on a little more what they're actually doing with pvp other than the sort of nebulous thing that i think has kind of gotten on people's nerves and i i you know to an extent when you don't know what's going on and the thing that you want to do isn't really progressing i can understand the frustration there i i for the most part have just kind of like been out of pvp a lot more just because i haven't really enjoyed a lot of their testing and it's like it is it is what it is but if that's your only mainstay in the game you're gonna be more frustrated however uh it was kind of nice at least uh to kick off the year with all of this that they kind of gave you gave us an idea that yes it's being worked on here are some of the overviews of what we're working on and they're supposedly going to be giving more information as they go so right that's good a little transparency is good there because it has definitely felt like it's been a back burner project just because it's hard to know other than these kind of nebulous tests, what exactly they're doing. So this gives at least a little direction that it's not just, at least it doesn't seem to just be lip surface that like, Oh yeah, yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're right. working on it. Right. This theoretically seems to kind of point in the direction is something's happening. No, it's not going to happen overnight, but ideally things will continue to improve because I do, uh, you know, not everybody's cup of tea is the PVP of Elder Scrolls Online, but for those of us who enjoy it, it's a lot of fun, and it's definitely kind of waned quite a bit in the last couple of years. So hopefully good things come about as a result of all this controversy. Sure. Yeah. And and it's nice to hear that there's, you know, going to be some more transparent <coughs> updates. And um, before we go too long on this, uh, d- don't worry, this episode isn't just about Elder Scrolls Online PvP. We're going to be yeah. talking about <laughs> where we, we're still talking about Not characters. The demographic for the show, really. <laughs> right, right. We're still talking about characters. We're still talking about lore. We're uh, we're switching over from talking about Skyrim characters to Elder Scrolls Online characters. And this uh, the rest of this month, we're actually talking about um, the two companion characters, starting with Mir Alendis, one of the two companions, and digging into the nature of those characters because they're they're interesting. They get to follow you around in the world, and I have a feeling, and I, I don't know for sure, but I have a feeling we'll probably be getting more companions with some of the updates coming later this year because of how popular these characters have been. So I thought it would be a really fun thing to dive into these characters. But to kind of wrap up our, our quick little PvP talk here at the beginning, um, for those of you who don't know, there's just been some there were some things that were said in a, a stream, uh, one of Rich's streams on uh, on Twitch that were taken out of context. And yeah, it, it's it, it kind of riled up the community. Sure. And, and it wasn't a good look, to be fair. It wasn't like, a good look. It, it's yeah. one of those things where it, it wasn't it wasn't handled very well, but. It also isn't people, you know, it it involved people not on the actual dev team as well. So you're not PR trained in that regard. Exactly. And and their their opinions aren't official, even if they're they're on Rich's stream. It doesn't it doesn't mean that's what Rich thinks. Sure. Um, And and the other thing is, which I mean, we do it plenty. uh, We do it plenty over at Tales as well. Sometimes you say stuff. And you're kind of like, that did not come across how I meant it to. Like, sure. Absolutely. It, whether whether it interpreted one way, it could have just been, 
whatever the case, I personally, I don't need to try to figure out what they said. It definitely did not come across in a good light. I totally understand. Right. But it seems like even in this rather bad situation, um, hopefully something good ends up coming about for the game and the players as a result of it. Just, you know, because it's like, well, to show that this isn't a condescending way of talking to people, it's like, Mm-hmm. Here we'll actually show you what we're talking about. Right, so, right, which is nice. Yeah. Which is nice. And sure. And uh, on the flip side, and and I just want to end with this, the the amount of heat they've been getting from the community, on one on one end, uh, the amount of criticism of hey, it's been years, we haven't gotten an update, and you guys haven't been very transparent. Constructive criticism is never really a bad thing if it's delivered respectfully, but. There is a contingency of human beings in every circle who have the inability to deliver criticism respectfully. And yes, that it continues to be a problem. And it's a problem with every group of people on in every part of of the planet. And unfortunately, with some segment of the PVP community, there are people who will use they, they get very frustrated, which is understandable, but they use language and they use condescending words and and messaging in ways that make them not look like actual adults and human beings who they themselves deserve respect either and that doesn't look good on them as well it doesn't matter how frustrated you are with somebody else and how much you believe them to be doing something wrong it's never good to act in an immature negative way towards other human beings like by making yourself look terrible doesn't actually help you get what you want and i wish people (laughs) would just learn that like you can you know you can respectfully disagree and you can respectfully petition and and you can do that you don't have to make yourself look like an idiot and i wish more people would figure that out Right. And, and, you know, we've constantly mentioned about how it's specifically, you know, I I've been around the community for a very long time and most interactions are great. Like it's, it's very enjoyable. Well, that's the thing. This is such a small percentage of every community are these people. And then they get so much attention because of the negativity that they bring. And also when people, I mean, cause it's sort of, it's sort of a PR thing, but a lot of people always say it's like, Oh, our passionate gamers. And it's like, yes, to a degree, but you also do have to kind of keep these things in check because this is a hobby. This is a game. Like right. it, right. it, 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 it. so th- there are people who work on these things and frustrations aside, or if you don't like practices that they're doing, because in terms of this stuff, there's fatigue with the store. There's, there's always things that kind of don't sit well with the community and various things. And I'm sure from the dev side, there's a lot of stuff they're tired of hearing, right? Whatever it's the, the thing is both sides need to just kind of keep themselves in a respectful checking manner. Mm -hmm. And it it, hopefully it ends up giving us something we like. Um, Because again, I I'm never really too worried about criticizing something I don't like in game. Sure. Because they, at least in my experience are receptive to it because I, I, you know, they don't always fix what I want because sometimes I guess they just, what I want might not be what their design is. And it's like, okay, well, it's not made just for me in this case. So, you know, it's, it's just, it's a weird situation that is a rose, uh, which didn't have the greatest connotations and kind of has spiraled off in a lot of things other than the original kind of starting point. And um, my, my hope is that in the end, it ends up being beneficial for the player base and everything like that. Sure. And if you are fr- frustrated, that's fine. Just try to not <laughs> get yourself out of control as well. Right, um, right, right. Realize know. there's other human beings on the other side of the screen sure. and treat so. them with respect. And, and uh, you know, uh, that's that's just where I, I want to end the conversation is that yeah. everybody deserves respect. And and I think as, as soon as you start breaking that rule, then that's when that's when you, you no longer your opinion no longer counts. Like yeah, in, in my mind, getting, you, you, like at that, that point, you become muted. It's it's like being it's like yeah. being on a Twitch stream and somebody just you know all of a sudden starts acting up in chat. It's like that's when the moderators ban you. Like, right? You know, 
it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's like being in a classroom, right? If if you're a teacher with the class and that one student starts like mouthing back at the teacher, that's when you get sent out of the classroom, right? At no point in any regular, like if you're in a, in a meeting at work and one of your, one of the people at work stands up and starts, you know, dropping a bunch of F-bombs at, <laughs> at somebody else across the table, like they're going to get walked out of the boardroom, right? You know, like, there's no regular adult situation where it's okay to just all of a sudden get aggressive and, and mean on a personal level with other people, which there, there's just no point to do that. Like, which can be tricky sometimes when you feel that that's being done to you. Like it, right. it, it gets but, awkward, right. but, but, but you got to take it a higher doesn't road. Fix anything to do it back. And there, on top of it, it like you, you shouldn't like, it's just a game. It's just a game. Everybody. I know it's just a game. <laughs> and, and if you care that much about it and believe me, I care a lot about games. My my living is tied to talking about <laughs> games. And yet I'm not going to get that heated about games. Right. Like this yeah, is this is my living now and it's tied to this. And I will not let myself get that heated about it. So if this is your hobby, then maybe think about that, you know. But anyway, let's just let's just leave that there. Because yeah, moving on, I, moving on, I, I, I believe in positive communities. I love everybody in our community and uh, we've gotten and thank you to everyone in our community. You guys constantly are getting compliments. I see them almost every day from people joining our discord saying what a positive community this is. And I always respond and say, thank you so much. It's it's you guys that make it that way. So thank you for being a positive community and kind of a beacon to everyone else. To show them that like hey this is what can happen on the internet so uh this whole beginning segment was not planned it just kind of happened so thank you for <laughs> yeah, thank you for sitting through it um right. why don't we move a into the news what, segment which <laughs> yeah but this has been a, this has been a thing that's been brewing and and i want to bring it yeah. back to like positivity and actual human communication because that's the only way to move forward in this world and there's not enough of that right now and we need more of that let's just talk through things and on that note if you feel a certain way about pvp stuff in eso Come talk with us and let's have a respectful conversation because I want to hear both sides of the argument, but I don't want anyone to get mad. You know, I don't want anyone throwing names around. Let's just talk, you know? Yeah. So anyway, let's move on with the, the rest of the episode. So today we're talking about Miri Alendis. She is one of the two companions that you can have in Elder Scrolls Online. And if you didn't realize that this was a thing yet because you haven't jumped into Elder Scrolls Online or you haven't come back to it in a while, this is something that came or out. Or tackled Blackwood, because that's where you get it. You yeah, get or, it. That's, where, that's where you get your companions. It's a new feature that came out in this last season with the Gates of Oblivion. This is new and has a feel much like the single player games where companions in this and Fallout are a big thing that was kind of missing from Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, and it's it's been really cool. And this is something I've really been enjoying a lot. And there's a lot more nuance to this than I, I initially thought when they first rolled it out. The companions, not only do they follow you around, you can kind of summon them whenever you want them there, just sure. kind of like a pet. But once they are running around with you, you can give them items you can give them uh, uh, a mount they can get their own mount and you can give them some yep. of your outfits to wear you can like yeah they, they have opinions about the things you do so let's let's dig into this because i want to get into her as a character first i want to know a little bit more about her and share more about her and then on the second half of the episode we're going to get into some of the nitty-gritty some of the things that she uh, likes or dislikes and some of the uh, particulars about having her as a companion so um so let's get into it. And, and in order to do this, there's a few things. There's only so much we know about Miri for right now. Most of it comes from the meet the character. And this is one of those documents that is written about many of the characters. We've read these before on some of the, these other characters. There's one that's written about Miri. This sums up most of what we know about her. Aside from what we learn in the specific character quests that you get with her once you reach a certain affinity level with her from doing certain things in the game and then you go on some other quests and you actually get to meet some other people that she cares about and do some quests around that that portion of the lore around her i'm not going to touch yet we're not going to discuss that because yeah it's too much of a treat and the content is still too new so maybe we'll cover that in the future we're going to leave that for now for you guys to discover when it's you decide to play through. It's, it's, worth it's definitely through. worth playing through. Um, 
Miri is my preferred of the two companions, mm -hmm. but both of the stories, when you uh, unlock them and play through them, I, I like both of them. I just prefer Miri as a character personally. Um, but yeah, bo both storylines in game, totally worth playing through and don't require um, you, you to have like, you know, it, it's story-based content. You, you don't need to have best in slot gear or anything like that to uncover that. So right. it, if you have access to that in game by having Blackwood, definitely do it. Um, it's it's worth it. Right. So we're not going to cover that, but we're going to give you some background on her and go over some details. So, uh, so Lotus, let's do this how we normally do it. I'm going to read like a paragraph and then we're okay. going to comment on it and you feel yeah. free to jump in. Um, so here it is. This is the, uh, the uh, a Fighters Guild letter of recommendation. Meet the character Miriel Lendis by Baldiri Lenham. Hail and well met, comrade. Regarding your recent request for an expert on Daedric matters of a sensitive nature, might I recommend Miri Alendis? So first we know she's an expert on Daedric matters, which is interesting, and that goes with the theme of Blackwood and the things that you do in, in that expansion. Sure. Even as a relatively young Dark Elf, she has already made a reputation for herself in Mournhold and the surrounding countryside. I have no doubt that she could be a help to you in Vivek City or wherever the Fighters Guild requires assistance. So we know she's an expert on Daedric stuff. She's a dark elf. She's been in and around Mournhold. So she's from that part of the continent. So not too much here yet. We're going to move nope. on to the next one. Mary comes from a minor dark elf family that has a somewhat checkered reputation for recovering ancient relics, especially items tied to Daedra and the Daedric Princes. <laughs> <laughs> Depending upon which princes you're dealing with, that's uh, frowned on in a lot of areas. Uh huh. Her father was a former Halalu merchant, one of the one of the big houses. Mm -hmm. of, uh, Moral ambiguity abounds yeah. with Halalu. Uh huh. Uh, who <laughs> wasn't above trading some of the antiquities they acquired for gold or favors while her mother was more of a procurer of said curiosities, delving into ruins with audacity and aplomb. I can confirm that Miri definitely takes after the maternal side of the family. Any thoughts on this? Um, not, it just, Miri... <sighs> It get, it comes we don't want to go into to spoilers yet. Yeah, right? I don't, I I don't want to talk about any of her right, storyline. That right. I, this is starting uh, to poke but, at some of the things that you come The later. idea is she she has a uh, she definitely isn't just like villainous or anything like that, but she's mm -hmm. got the moral gray area uh, yeah. uh, 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 floating around her her being so to speak um in her blood from, yes yeah exactly it's maybe not necessarily always needing to be on the up and up if it's if it's uh, advantageous right but she still has a moral compass and we'll, but, we'll talk yeah, about but that she's later. not just like some dark brotherhood assassin who you know is just whatever for money oh yeah totally i just like to murder people or so you know something like that but it the, and when we get into their likes and dislikes, it'll yes. lean into that more later. Right, right. Uh, Mary's work for us here in Mournhold has been a blessing, even if the ordinators sometimes look askew at her methods. Not only has she been an asset in our study and subsequent drive to deal with the dark anchors that litter the landscape far and wide, she has also been invaluable when it comes to certain missions we have been charged with by the Tribunal Temple. I don't know how to or I don't know how it is for you in the city of the living God Vivek, but our guild hall's proximity to mother Amalexia encourages her to utilize us as though we were another arm of her ordinators. It pays well. So who am I to complain? Another one of those like mm, gray area. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Hey, as, as the ends just kind of justify the means, I feel like is a good situation for her. As long as you're not just completely off the rails type of deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it started, they started mentioning Vivek on Alexia, the tribunal. Um, yeah. So it goes on and says, luckily Mary holds the tribunal in high esteem. And though she is nowhere near what any of us would call orthodox, she possesses a driving interest in the anticipations and how they relate to the living gods. 
Now, reminder, the anticipations are Daedric Princes. So mm-hmm. this is this is tying back right to the other one. And so, it's ingrained in Dark Elf culture quite a bit. Right. The Dunmer deal with some Daedra in a positive way, and then they have their House of Troubles as well, which you know, those are the ones that they kind of steer away from. So again, other groups might consider this a little less savory. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. why we get into the gray area a little bit with uh, right. morality in, in Tamriel. Right. So she, uh, the anticipations being the anticipations of the living tribunal, right. uh, Azura, Boethia, and Mephala. Yep. So she, she has a generally positive uh, in fact she has a she holds them in high esteem she looks right she looks up to them so that if you are not a fan of daedric princes then you might clash with me on some of those topics <laughs> a little bit <laughs> a little bit and then uh and then it goes on and says um uh so tracking down relics relate uh, related to the anticipations for the tribunal has solidified her position as a worthy consultant in all matters concerning the daedra she isn't a worshiper of the Daedra, if that's your concern. So she she looks up to them, but she doesn't worship them. But she has analyzed them the way a Kwama miner studies every aspect of the insects they keep and the eggs those creatures lay. As Miri likes to say, you can't fetching deal with an enraged Aelit unless you know what made it fetching mad in the first place. <laughs> For that reason, she has dedicated herself to knowing all she can about Daedra and Daedric relics. <laughs> she can't all right. fetching no. <laughs> yeah. Also, I like the flavor text of uh, they. They definitely have. I. It's it, depending upon how often they use it. Um, the regional dialect uh-huh. of the situation where fetching is like one of their insults and uh, uh-huh. and and all of the the dark elf slurs slash uh you know curses and stuff like that it's pretty funny her, her dialogue is pretty heavy with that it if those were legitimate like swears in our word i feel like she's kind of like the the trucker uh, a companion of the two. Yeah, Livian chat says Miri be cursing like a sailor. Like a sailor. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, uh, fetching in this is like a uh, frack in um, uh, what was it? Battle Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Fracking. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, just yeah. close enough, but not there. Mm, yep. Yep. Close enough. Yep. <laughs> fetch is the f word yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty much um so it goes on and says now i don't want you to get the wrong idea miri is competent and hardworking, but she's in no way easy to deal with she despises authority figures and constantly skirts along the edge of trouble with the local law she bends the rules nearly to the breaking point and she gets things or but she gets things done when she doesn't get her way her mood turns darker than the bottom of malakath's black boot and the only thing fouler than her mood is her mouth. She curses like a sea elf pirate. I remember the first time she graced our hall with her presence. Mary felt that Soros Rothen had insulted her in some way. She unleashed a barrage of profanities upon the poor sod that ended by proclaiming him a scrib sucking swit with lips an alit would kiss. <laughs> we laughed for nearly an hour over that. <laughs> so yes, a sea elf pirate to be more specific. Uh huh yep so mm-hmm. again sa- sailor miri in this case <laughs> yes yes um yeah and she's constantly dropping little uh i mean both companions drop little lines of flavor text as you run around in fact you can change them in the game you can make them yeah. more or less often I, I i really like that i i didn't realize that at first but it, the more you want them to speak you can up or lower the frequency in which they will actually comment on situations in in game and some of the comments i i find really fascinating i actually um uh, not sure how far down it whatever one just on comments i'll just add it here since we were just discussing like the little commentaries they have Mm -hmm. one thing and i actually have it on video i was going to post it i just didn't have enough time before i got you know i have between oh, you and work, I haven't yeah, yeah. had a chance to post it, but it's mm-hmm. a little video clip that I got that I wanted to post just because I'm not sure I've, you know, I've played Blackwood since it's been out. I usually have a companion floating around with me unless I'm like in a group where they're not allowed because there's too many of us or we're in PVP. Um, I summoned my 
uh, I, I have a Betty Netch as a non-combat pet in game. Right. And I just like to have it floating around by me. And she actually acknowledges the Betty Netch specifically, which I thought was fascinating. I summoned it and it floats in from the side and she was like, Oh, hello there, little one. And I was like, that is so cool. That's <laughs> so, great. Yeah. And, and she doesn't do it all the time. Like when I summon it in. So it, it's clearly like a thing where it, it registers in some situations, but it, it blew my mind that somebody actually was like, oh, she responds like to what I'm doing. And I, I'm curious if it's because it's a Morrowind based creature too, a Betty Natch. I, I bet it is. Um, uh, yeah. There was something else I noticed she did that was very specific to Morrowind. Uh, was it, was it, it might've been a mount. Maybe it was a Guar mount or something. There was something that happened um i can't i can't recall it right now but i was like i think that's like a morrowind thing yeah and, and i bet so i wonder if she has morrowind dialogue related to stuff like that I, but it, it or it we went to those... a location it was like i'd been traveling back and forth on the map like mm -hmm. buying and selling stuff i was crafting writs, so i was traveling all over the place sure and uh went back to vardenfell because that's like my main crafting hub and she like she had vardenfell specific dialogue and it was like one of the first times that it actually just proc. Yeah, she'll do that in uh, Clockwork City as well. Actually, mm -hmm. if you bring her to the Clockwork City, um, yeah, it actually improves her demeanor going to Clockwork. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we'll, yeah, we'll get into more of that stuff. We'll but get into I, that I love, stuff later, I love but, yeah. all of these little details, and and like the, these are like the little things that make these characters feel so much more lived in. And, and this is the stuff that I didn't expect. Um, we've got one. We've got one more paragraph. So let's get through yeah. the rest of this and then we'll get into all the other details. Yeah, the fine details there's that so we much kind of stuff. started to touch on. Yeah, but. yeah. So much fun stuff. So it, it wraps up and says, I wouldn't want a guild hall fall of Miria Lendis's, but I wouldn't trade the one I have been using for all the scrib jerky in Morrowind. And you know, I love the scrib jerky. If you need a Daedric consultant to delve into the ruins and tombs that decorate the Vardenfell wilderness, or if you have a mission that requires Daedric expertise in Blackwood or anywhere else in Tamriel, you wouldn't find a better hire than Mary Alendis. On that, you have my word. Uh, and then it's signed at the bottom. So, uh, it's, I mean, she's she's full of personality. She's a little morally gray. She talks like a pirate. She's a dark <laughs> elf. She's, I mean, what else, you know, what else do you want? Like, she's awesome. It's hit with a lot of people, too. Yes, yes. So I'm excited to see what else they do with um, other potential companions. But yeah, pretty, pretty good one so far. So yeah, they fit. They filled out the writing on them quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, kind of more than I expected with companions on honestly prior. Like when I heard about them, I was less interested in them than when I got them. I, yes. I was actually kind of surprised how much I liked them um, just to have around. Like I, I don't, I don't really RP or anything like that, but just having them float around while I'm questing or whatever, it's just like, Oh yeah. They chime in with random things. They help out with random things. I'm not going to bring them into like that trials, but like they're, they're a nice little flavor to just have floating around. Absolutely. And I, I, I too was surprised. Um, I kind of thought that they would just kind of be a thing, you know, just they're there. They do a little bit of extra damage. They say some generic things, but the fact that they fleshed them out so much. Um, and I was a little disappointed when they were like, oh, there's going to be two and yeah. we're probably not going to get any for a while until maybe the next big expansion drops. And I was like, man, why, why is that? Like, maybe they're just feeling it out. But now that we've lived with the companions for a while and seeing how involved they are seeing how involved like it makes sense they put a lot of work into these characters there's a lot here like they really took the time to build these characters out and and put a lot of work into them so i having knowing that they did that i would rather have two characters this involved than four characters less involved yeah for sure for sure from so all right well we got to go thank our patrons so we'll be right back and then we're going to delve even deeper into miri Alendis and some of the things that she brings with you when you bring her on your quest so we'll be right back the skies are marked with numberless sparks each a fire and every one a sign all right so here we are in the middle of the show we don't have any brand new patrons this week but we do have our regular patrons, all 58 of you guys. So thank you very, very much for being here, including our Daedric Princes, Mr. Gami Boy and Noodle Al Dente. Thank you for being our Daedric Princes and um, all 56 of you. And if we've done anything to help you get through your workday, your workout, your driving to work, or you're mailing in your, um, 
your uh, yearly insurance thing that you forgot that you got two months ago and then it sat on your desk until you realized it today and then you were like, oh crap, it's probably late, but you wrote out the thing and put it in the mail today anyway. Again, these very specific scenarios where people listen to us, it's really, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> if you, really shocking. If you, if you happen to be listening to podcasts when that happened, because you're really good at keeping up with those the physical mail where you have to actually write a physical check. Oh, snail mail. Who even does that anymore? But if, if we helped you do that, then go to patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast <laughs> and uh, check out all the different tiers uh, where you can get ad-free episodes and join us on future episodes of the show and get a t-shirt because oh man all of those t-shirts have been going out absolutely thank you for, for via snail mail <laughs> via snail mail well, you can't send a t- t-shirt digitally there are no <laughs> nfts for t-shirts yet <laughs> oh god maybe i should sell maybe that's what i need to do i need to take the designs for the t-shirts and sell them as nfts oh my how much would you guys pay for the nfts of the Never mind. I'm not going to I do feel that. like people would pay to make you not do that. People are going to get mad at me. They're be like, screw this podcast. I hate it. Tom's trying to make NFTs. He's going to gonna rob us. Okay. I'm not making NFTs. I, I promise I'm not going to do it. Rob the princess. No it was a <laughs> yes. joke. I promise yeah. it was a joke. No, no, um, nobody's making NFTs. Nobody's making NFTs off it, of the, it, the podcast it, t-shirts. Don't worry. Not to and derail, if they are, but NFTs aren't real. And if they are, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to sue them because I made those designs. They're mine. They're, <laughs> <laughs> because you can't steal my designs internet um but anyway go check out go check out the patreon and thank you again for all the support and um just everybody for being here and helping us do this because it's because of you guys that we're able to do this show so absolutely thank you so very very much and um but no new reviews or anything but always it's always 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 an awesome thing when you guys take the time to leave a rating or review on Apple podcasts. And if you leave some words with a five-star rating, we'll read that out on a future episode of the show. And just a reminder, if you listen on Spotify, there's a place up at the top. If you look at the uh, actual podcast list with all the episodes up near the top, underneath the description of of the uh, the show, there's a little area where you can click on the little button there with all the little stars. Thank you for the deluge of stars there. Yes. Awesome. Thank you to everybody. You guys are the best. All right. Um, well, we've got a, the rest of the episode to go through, so let's go back and do that. Yes, yes, you're entirely brilliant. Conquering madness and all that. Blah, 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 blah. Ben of Tamaria says he's got his first shirt. Ben. Cool. You got to share some pictures, dude. I want to see some pictures. I want to see you guys wearing the shirts. I want to I see these on, on Twitter and on the Discord and stuff. Um, that's exciting. Man, I'm so jealous. I wish I had the shirts. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so let's talk more about Miri Alendis. So... Okay, so there some of the fun things I'm going to go. I'm going to talk about the things that she approves of and disapproves of, because that this is one of my favorite things about these companions, because it's kind of like some of the companions in like Fallout or, you know, in Skyrim, like there's certain things that they like and certain things that they don't like. Um, And in order to get to the point where she trusts you enough to unlock the other quests, you have to get up to a high enough rapport for those things to unlock. And each of the things you do when she's around you like equipped and actually out uh will affect that rating so this is something you want to be aware of because if you're not paying attention you could be doing things with her and just like completely wreck that score if you're not paying attention to it (laughs) so uh let's go through the disapproval stuff first because these are the things you have to look out for and they also they also give us a little bit more of a glimpse into her personality which is what i also like so here we go the list is fairly short. The first thing is engaging any friendly NPC in combat and killing them. She doesn't like that. Yeah. Back to the moral gray area, not a psychopath. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. She, she does have some degree of moral compass. Hence why I specifically had mentioned the dark brotherhood thing being a little too far. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that makes sense. Just like going murdering people. Not into yeah. that. All right. But stealing a little more ambiguity there. Stealing fine with. Uh, yeah. Next on the list, using the Blade of Woe. So for anybody who doesn't play Elder Scrolls Online, the Blade of the Woe is, is an item you get from the Dark Brotherhood expansion, the DLC, where you can use it to get like a one hit kill on enemies when you sneak up on them. Yes. Yeah. And if you use it on a friendly NPC, she really doesn't. like. It's like a negative 25. Yeah, you're you're well, you're I mean, at that point, you're just performing an assassination on on 
just another person a citizen of tamriel right you're just walking up against like joe is out there you know on his farm just like farming away right. and you just sneak up on a poor farmer dude yeah and just stab him and then boom murder time and right. she's like what are you doing and she's not a fan not a fan of that at all all right successful completion of sacrament quest negative 25 points again carrying out a dark brotherhood contract <laughs> Not Which, a fan. As we know from the Dark Brotherhood, um, those contracts are not based on if the person deserves it. It's based on somebody taking out a, a black sacrament on that person and you fulfilling it. She's not okay with that. So general general point here is if you're going to be doing Dark Brotherhood stuff, don't bring her along with you as much she's as she's not going to like that. She seems like she might be handy. No, don't. Just put her away. Yeah. Send her. Send her home. Say, yeah. Go back to Mournhold. Do your thing for Dave a while. Skilled, yes. Dark Brotherhood. No. <laughs> yep. I'm. I'm gonna go do my thing for a little while, Mary. You go. Oh, don't worry. What am I gonna go do? I am just. I'm just gonna. I don't worry about it. And yeah. Don't worry, pretty little head about it. I'm, I'll be back later. Yeah. And just like let her go. Um. So collecting torch bug or butterfly negative one. She's not a fan of you picking those bugs out of the air. That is super frustrating. Um, yeah, I know. I grabbed one the other day. I was standing yes. up on a hill in Vardenfell. I had just got done crafting some stuff, doing my rates and things. And uh, and then I was looking at my skills and equipped a different skill line. And I was like, uh, maybe I'll try out this other ability on that, like, beast thing over in the distance. I don't remember what, which beast it was. Mm -hmm. And I was standing up on a hill looking at it in the distance, getting ready to shoot it with a bow. And I happened to notice there was like... A butterfly or a torch but something was floating right there and i was like huh i'll grab it and i was like pink and it was like mary didn't like that and i was like what what yeah the, <laughs> so, so the the worst <laughs> is if you go to riven spire because there are torch bugs everywhere in river spire mm -hmm. including in front of most of the way shrines ah. and when you try to click on the way shrine you rip the wings off a torch bug and miri gets upset with you right before you fast travel uh, very annoying uh, no bueno mary i just look i didn't mean to I, it was an accident let it go yeah the hitbox is too big on those little guys i'm sorry yeah and the hitbox is on the my one complaint is the hitbox on the companions is actually pretty large uh, especially when you're using a controller because the jump button is the same as the is the talk button is the talk button right yes so there, there have been is. times when i've been like i'm gonna jump over this wall talk yeah. to mary J no no i'm gonna jump over the talk to mary <laughs> crap oh yeah <laughs> i wish they would just make it a different button or like a press and hold or something yeah or, or do like a synergy to talk to them like a, mm. a separate synergy yeah. you could always do something like that right or just hold her summon button yeah, sure. Like, oh, you have to hold her summon button for two seconds for her for your star combo. That would be great. That would, sure. be, that would be so much better. Okay, yep. so uh, three more, three more disapprovals. This one's this one's great. It's very simple. Use a ship. Yeah, she doesn't like ship. she talks like a pirate, but she she ain't no pirate. Yeah, I don't I don't get it. I don't I, I don't understand. There's not even I, in in and no website have I seen the actual amount of negative affinity that this actually brings. I haven't tested it out yet, but she doesn't like it if you get on a ship. I usually just fast travel. You know how like you have quests and they're like get on the ship right. and or go to this location. I never do that. I just fast travel to the shrine that's close to the shore, right? But you get on a ship, she's like no. Don't, don't do it. Maybe she has severe motion sickness. Yeah, she gets seasick, maybe? She just gets seasick and just pukes the whole way. Yeah, she's just like, oh, she just turns, what, she, the greenest shade of dark elf? Exactly, yep. Whatever shade that is? I mean, that's like a gray green, like a purple. Fetching green. boats. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's another one. Using Blade of Woe on an NPC additional times while the other is still on cooldown. What? I don't know what that means. Using Blade of Woe on an NPC additional times while the other is still on cooldown. So I've I've had her be upset at me for using the Blade of Woe on an enemy before. Like, yeah, an she, evil she NPC. doesn't like the Blade of Woe. She just like, doesn't like it at all. She just does not like that mechanic. And so maybe when the other is on cooldown, meaning like they are unaware, like they're not active or something. 
like sneaking up on somebody and using it yeah m- she's maybe like, that's it like but she she didn't like that so yeah i, 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 I just know she doesn't like the blade of woe no matter what you're doing don't use the blade of woe nope nope and then um the last one here and that's a negative five points and then the last one here is entering the dark brotherhood sanctuary you can't even go in yeah she just doesn't points. want anything to do with the dark brotherhood she you go in there and she's like uh she it just freaks her out she's like well, she's what clearly a fan of the morag tong instead <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> well, well I mean, at least that one's sanctioned you know <laughs> by her people um <laughs> so th- those are the disapprovals now here are the things that she actually really likes so if you want to focus on getting on her good side because you've actually pulled the wings off of torch bugs or something these are the things to focus on i'm going to go from the bottom to the top because it kind of builds in this direction on the, on the list so summoning demonic chicken pet plus one sure <laughs> so if you have a, ch- a demonic chicken pet summon it use it yeah. she, she likes it i wonder if there's like specific quest text or words that she says to it there might be um reading a book from a bookshelf plus one because she's a scholar. She likes data. Yeah, she likes to learn. She likes to learn. Right. I, I it's and that's super easy to do because there are bookshelves available in so many places. So a lot of times you can just run through, just grab it real quick. Just grab a shelf. It bumps her up a little bit and it can counteract any wings you ripped off on the way into wherever you were going. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh crafting alcohol plus one every she five minutes. Booze. Yep. So every five minutes you can craft another alcohol. She'll like it. She's like awesome. She's down with that. Killing snakes, but not lamias plus one every five, every 10 minutes. So if you're running around one of those locations like the Alakir Desert, where you just see a little snake wiggling around, I always feel bad when I accidentally kill one, but she likes it. That and um, giant snakes work too, as well, like the ones you'll find that are threats as mm-hmm. opposed to the passive little snakes that are just kind of like around. But if you're in like a dungeon like Ox Grinium or something like that, yes, there's a lot of Lamia, but there's like the giant snakes. She doesn't like those either. So killing those is a boon, so. Having her in some dungeons and stuff like that can be very handy. Yep. And then walking up to the completed vault of, I'm going to mess up the word, Moita in Somerset. Moita? Moita? Sure. That's Which I, I'm, you, I think that's here. probably at the end of a quest line where you complete it. Um, and then if you walk up to it, you get plus five. Yep. Entering Vivek's library with a fully collected model of Vardenfell. I believe that's at the end of one of those quest lines, right? Yeah, that's the optional collection thing that they have. Uh, they, they've been doing for a long time now, actually. And the Vardenfell model is is pretty elaborate to find all the uh, all the stuff you need. Um, you actually get it for a uh, housing item, too. Hmm. Uh, so that's plus five. Learning a new motif. And this one doesn't have a score on it, so I wonder if it depends on... I didn't know that, and that is motif. a interesting thing that i wish i knew huh <laughs> right like so if you're if you're picking up motifs make sure you have her out because yeah i did not know that one mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then uh if you view a completed and there's a list of these uh vault of Mo- moita uh, house of orsimer glories rathana di renata or kajit of the moons Oh, so she she basically is fine with any of the museum piece completion things. That's she loves pretty cool. It. She loves that stuff. Oh, I thought it was just the Vardenfell one. That's again not another thing to learn. Yep, that's all listed here. So that's plus five for all of those. Uh, looting Sigic portals. She's she's all about that because again, more information, more uh, potential fancy stuff you find. Right, plus five. Antiquity excavating plus five every five minutes so if you do an antiquity every so often that raises her fairly quickly yep so again that makes sense she's she likes exploring learning new things sure visiting the brass fortress through the gate plus 10 every 20 hours yeah so in other words don't fast travel into the brass fortress in um the Clockwork Clockwork City. City. Mm-hmm. go out front walk through the doors that's how it always popped for me i don't know if there's another way to trigger it but it seems kind of specific the way that's actually written in this but yeah if you go in through the front gate she'll give you points uh affinity points uh, otherwise not so much yep and then entering daedric delve slash public dungeon 10 points every 30 minutes yep she likes to explore and kill stuff yep especially if it's daedric uh, and then the top ones you can do, the top three are Fighters Guild Daily plus 125 points. Yes. 
She you can find it in your fighters guild. It will also unlock her fighters guild skill line and level it up. Yeah. So that's that's when you if you if you really want to get her up there in order to do the quests I, that I would do that first every day. Yes. And then completing Ashlander daily quests for Numani Rossi, another 125 points. Yep. And so those two together, that's 250 right there. Every day you can absolutely grab. And that's yeah. so much more than all of the rest of these all combined. If I remember correctly, uh, that's the quest line you can get the Ashlander um, motif out of as well, I believe, is their dailies. So you can multitask because then if you get the motif, you can learn it with her and she get points for that too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And then the, the very top one is completing her personal quest, which is 500 and you only get it once. So yes, it kind of she's got a couple off, right? quest kinda... quests that you can do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the achievements that you can do include and these are all these were all are covered under the approval stuff, but specifically it's crafting an alcoholic beverage. Fighters Guild Daily Quest and visiting a Daedric Delve or Public Dungeon. You do those three things and you'll knock out all, all the achievements with her. Yeah, plus getting her to level uh, 20, which is the max level for your companion. Um, that'll contribute to that as well. And then, you know, once their affinity is maxed out and you continue the quests and stuff like that and get to finish that off. Yeah, so um, the other thing I wanted to cover here is specifically the abilities that she has and uh she is um she's a night blade so as a character she works similarly to a player character she has uh, skill lines that you can set up just like a night blade so she has the deadly assassin skill line the living shade and then the soul thief skill line and you can choose some of those abilities and slot them in um and then her uh expertise which is kind of her bonus for having her around is and, and again it makes sense for her character uh, treasure chests found through treasure maps and in the overland have a 30 percent chance to provide additional loot from hidden compartments the treasure from these hidden compartments may contain additional gold sellables or recipes so if you are going out there looking for treasure finding you know using your treasure maps doing those things make sure you bring her with you because you'll get extra stuff and it pops pretty regularly in my experience because she's usually the one traveling around with me and I get those little hidden bags constantly. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So decent amount of the time it's gold, too. And I think I mean, I, uh, since my character is an imperial, you get a degree of I, I believe it's a one percent gold experience, uh, gold, gold bonus to my character. But regardless, I, I don't know if the CP affects it as well. It might. But either way. Mm -hmm basically about like the equivalent of opening an extra treasure chest in my experience you get an extra hundred bucks that's right for yeah which i mean doesn't sound like but but it adds up like especially oh, yeah. if you're opening stuff all the time it's just like yeah okay yeah no, every repair costs or whatever every yeah every little bit adds up for sure um anything else that you want to you want to cover with her anything else that kind of stood out for you um, no, specifically with with her um she's my preferred of the two companions um i have her spec'd out into a damage dealer in my game, which has been pretty useful. Um, one thing that is just related to all companions, but again, it's kind of helpful if you're out doing stuff anyways, is we had mentioned you can gear them up, you can dress them in whatever costume you want, you can pick which mount they wear and stuff like that. They, or, wear, or they wear. They don't wear. <laughs> well, I guess they could. That's wow. dark. But, uh, <laughs> um, but which, which mount they ride around on. Um, the costume thing is actually pretty neat because it's not just a... I mean, you can put them in a costume, but the entire outfitting system that is kind of so lauded in this game because you can use any motifs and it entirely applies to them as well um when you have companions unlocked when you have it uh ha have one of them summoned you go and it opens up a thing like an extra slot where you fully design what they look like which is really cool especially because a lot of people like fashion scrolls is like their yeah. go-to uh <laughs> yeah. yeah me <laughs> me i'm people <laughs> nah, there you go I, I, um, housing eh. fashion stuff yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah um so that's that's a really cool uh feature but one thing that i always try to remember is when you're, you're picking stuff up um they have their own set of gear um and and 
you know, what you want them to do and what traits they have and stuff like that is, is based on that. Just like with you gearing up your character, um, something to note, always have them available if you're interested in that, because if they are out, the game will calculate that they exist and it will drop you items there's a chance items will drop for your companion. If you don't have a companion summoned, the game will not roll you companion gear. Mm. So they will never actually get anything. So if it's something you want to use, make sure they just exist because when you're <laughs> looting, there's a chance that you're going to get stuff for them. And it does make a substantial difference in them. Um, from an end game perspective, obviously they're not the most like valuable type of thing. It's more of a fun adventuring thing and you know, uh, whatever. However, I've got my Miri pretty geared, especially for a companion. Mm -hmm. um, and not to flex my Miri character, but just going to say she lasts through most in like world bosses and incursions in game mm -hmm. next to dead players all the time. So I'm just <laughs> saying it does make a difference. Like she, she might not dodge in time all the time, but you can get her so that she's actually pretty durable or, you know, she can do it. Okay. Amount of damage is just a backup type of deal. So it's like, ah, they're not without their uses just to have with you. There's no real negative to having them with you. Not at all. Um, so my main character is a Nightblade, and he does a lot of single, single focused damage. Yep. Like he, like I've got him specked out. He hits with a bow from a distance and then gets in there real close. And yeah, like, single chop, target slayer, choppy, 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 choppy. And then the yep. health bar goes and, and disappears. And then I focus somebody else and just like, and there goes yep. the health bar. Right. And uh, so, but, but of course the night blade is kind of a glass cannon for being a single player target killer. Um, so my Miri can do some damage, but she has a healing staff. So okay. she's always so yours there. Is more of a healer. She's always there hanging out behind me. Mm -hmm. Just hanging out. She's like every so often when she, I just need to top off my health. She's like, wing. And there goes my health. I'm just right back up. And see that that's the benefit there. Whereas yeah. a lot of times I'm running around as a tank. So I'm not the quickest at breezing through stuff. Whereas I, I have my Miri equipped with a bow. So in my case, Miri's nuking stuff from orbit while I'm up there doing <laughs> what I do. So it, it just speeds up my questing as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't need to respect for it. Augments the thing that you're, you're weaker on. Right. Yeah. And, and so that, and that happens for me too. So now like, uh, I've been, I've been going through some zones that I didn't really complete everything on and I can run up I can, and I can solo world bosses so much easier because, um, whereas a night blade on a world boss sometimes is, is just a little too squishy because if you get hit by something and it just happens to do too much damage, you go down because you can't tank a whole lot when you're that squishy. Um, but she's, she, if I, as long as I can survive that hit, she usually can help top me back off. Um, yeah, there and, you go. and then sometimes, you know, and I've got some survivability stuff slotted for when I'm just questing in the world, but sometimes of they course. just don't heal fast enough. And, yeah. she, and that extra little boost of health from her is enough to keep me around long enough to keep just chewing on the boss until the boss is dead. So, sure. um, so yeah, it helps. It, it, it really is nice, you know? Um, so, you know, the regular questing stuff is generally easy and, it, you know, yeah, over, it's, I, it's not I, hard. I, I never really like to say things are necessarily easy just because with experience and gear you can get through them with minimal effort right like just running through a delve by yourself is is never difficult once, sure. especially once you have experience and gear like you're saying right. but doing some of the things that typically would have been harder to do on your own yeah if you are wanna, more if there's nobody now. around fighting a world boss and you want it dead right it, that's more intensive yeah, <laughs> than fighting yeah. a, a, a small pack of aylets out in the field or something like that. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm less, I'm less scared to try it out now because of the yeah, companion. There, the there were definitely, sure. it was definitely more often before that I, you know, with this character that I would just be like, ah, I'm probably not going to be able to do it. Now I, I feel like there's probably, there's a good, maybe yeah, four out of five chance that I'll it's actually that be able to take it on. Buffer that kind of makes it so that you don't need to be, more on the quote unquote elite side to be doing yep. higher end stuff because you've got this little backup until actual players arrive to maybe give you 
help as well yeah. so yeah I, and i've been able to actually get through like i don't know the last four out of the last five that i've i've tackled on my own by yeah. myself in in zones that just aren't that busy right now so sure. you know it's, it's been great it's been really really nice so um so that's miri that's miri alendis and uh you know there's there's some quests that we we don't want to spoil but go play them yeah they're very cool. worth doing worth doing and who knows we might get more stuff around these these companion characters i think it would be really cool to have um you know now that they're they're actually in the game to have new content coming out and even have them like recognized or referenced by characters that you meet in new content you know saying things like oh you and your companion oh i know oh, that'd be neat you know things like that who knows maybe that sure that that'd stuff be pretty cool actually could show up because you know they, they do create dynamic dialogue sometimes depending on circumstances so that could be a thing yeah but who knows um so uh before before we do our sign off just want to remind everybody that on thursday nights after the elder scrolls lore cast we have our naked questing uh group on elder scrolls online on pc i'm just going to call it our naked mob at this point because it's just the a bunch naked of us mo- I, I like uh, naked mobs a good name for it yeah it's just a bunch of us running around doing a bunch of quests trying to get through all the content in the game naked <laughs> and, and so it just turns into a big mob of us running around naked you are absolutely welcome to come join us and we do it during the stream so you can always just watch or you can join us in game so stay tuned for that if you are watching during the live show right now and get ready to log into elder scrolls online on pc if you want to jump in with us we'll be transitioning over to that in just a few minutes mm-hmm. but lotus do you have anything else you want to share before we head out um no i was gonna say we're back into the usual swing over at tales of tamriel um now that the new year has kicked off and the other thing that i actually started and i started it ironically after we had the show last time um i started my own personal youtube channel um which will have kind of just playthroughs of the live streams which a lot of people have been curious on uh so if you don't like twitch uh or you're not around for my wildly erratic schedule when i actually do stream because there's no (laughs) semblance of a a schedule um i'm uploading those to youtube if you're interested in some of the classic games i'm going to be going through and completing all of them um so right now i'm steadily uploading the battle spire playthrough i've got the arena playthrough to do and then we'll be doing you know more in the series as i go on um and then there's plenty of gameplay stuff which is less toward this show's you know angle however i do have a lore based thing that i'm planning on working on Ooh. um when i can find some time to do it so i will clue you into it as well and hopefully i'll be able to start getting those uploaded to uh the channel as well just for something if people would like to check it out i uh it's just it's just lotus of doom it's the same thing as everywhere else <laughs> <laughs> all right cool 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 um Awesome. Go check it out. Yeah. And you you had an awesome response from the community once you let people know. Everyone was like, I, yeah, I did. Everyone everybody follow, follow Lotus. Yeah, everybody was very, very nice um, as I don't really. So my goal was to get a custom URL this year. That That's the extent of my goal with this. It was like, cool. Uh-huh. I want to mess around with doing this. Like there's no like objective other than, oh, this will be kind of fun to do as like a little side project. And scheduling is a little more free with YouTube because streaming, you kind of, if people aren't available when you're streaming, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas on YouTube, you have the people can watch if they're interested, they can watch it whenever the hell they want. It doesn't matter. It's amazing how Uh, that works. Yeah. It's weird how that works. (laughs) Um, So I was like, okay, well, my goal will be with your help. Actually, I was like, when do you get a custom URL? I don't even know how any of this works. <laughs> yeah. And you just like, messaged me out of it, nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you were like, Oh, once you get to a hundred subs, you, you can redesign your custom URL with a couple other things. So I set up the channel and uh, yeah, huge thank you to everybody. Um, I, I hope, those of you that have checked out what's there so far, it's still pretty bare bones. It's, it's, you know, new, um, the amount of people who, who subbed to the channel and, and liked it on day one, uh, it took about seven hours and I already got my custom URL. <laughs> so that's awesome. That, that, thank you everybody for, for doing that. I, I, it was just very nice of all of you to do that for me. So that, thank you. I, uh, I, I completed my goal on basically the first day I tried it. So now hopefully I can just upload some interesting stuff for people to check out if they're, um, interested in that i'm trying to cover both gameplay stuff and a little bit of lore stuff just as a, a mix well there you go that makes sense yeah. i mean that's yeah, that's exactly. what you do that's what you do so right so yeah, man 
that's awesome new project that's awesome that's great well um let's see i've got my stuff there's the robotsradio.net website so if you're looking for podcasts you're looking for the shows that i do all the different lore casts or other shows on the network or you are interested in starting your own podcast and you're interested in either the book that i wrote called video game podcasting or joining us on the robots radio rocket club and you would like to join our the mentorship program for shows starting their own podcasts and want to be associated with the network then all of that stuff is at robotsradio.net and just a reminder Lately, I've been streaming every night of the week, except for Saturday nights, unless I get some extra time on Saturday nights, but every other night of the week, streaming games, playing things like Elder Scrolls Online, Skyrim with my mom, and stuff like that, and um, I'd love to have you come hang out with me on the other nights during the week when there aren't podcasts, but otherwise, podcasts on the other nights. And uh, just after this, we'll be transitioning over to Elder Scrolls Online to run around naked and confuse the community as to why there's a bunch of naked people running around <coughs> punching a bunch of things and finishing their quests. So uh, please come join us. We're going to make the biggest mob of naked people there can possibly be. And if you are going to join us, then we're going to switch over to the Robots Radio Discord. We'll be in the uh, live in in-game stream voice chat and if you are joining us in game then you are welcome to join us on voice chat for the stream so uh, I'll see you guys in there in just a few minutes and thanks again everybody for tuning in we'll be back next week to talk about the other companion Bastion and learn more about him so stay tuned for that and until next time stay safe in Tamriel everyone we'll talk to you later bye everybody, bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. If you have something you'd like to contribute to the show, please reach out to us at elderscrollslorecast at gmail.com or on Twitter at ESO Lorecast. I really appreciate you listening and I'd love to hear from you soon. You've been listening to the Robots Radio Podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.